This video is sponsored by New Masters Academy. Learn to draw, paint, or sculpt from the world's best artists. New Masters Academy offers a professional art school equivalent education from the comfort of your home. New Masters Academy is affordable, a fraction of the cost of traditional art school. New Masters Academy courses are taught by top professional artists and instructors with decades of experience in both the fine art and entertainment art fields. New Masters Academy offers courses suitable for beginners as well as professionals with resources including over 1,500 hours of structured art courses, interactive live classes and certificates, downloadable course attachments, member-only community perks, over 50,000 professional reference images, over 100 interactive 3D reference models. You can share your successes and struggles on New Masters Academy's public forums or interact live through New Masters Academy's Discord channel. Get portfolio reviews, personalized learning plans, career advice, and more with optional one-on-one -on -one coaching. Every course is included with your subscription and all courses are available for unlimited streaming. Go to www.nma.art and start your seven day free trial. You can use the coupon code ARTPROF at checkout to save 20% off your subscription. What's up people? Welcome to our artist studio hangout. If you would like to learn how to turn your artistic weakness into your strength, check out artprof.org where we have lots of free resources, tutorials, critiques, art dares, pro development, and all that cool stuff. So with that said, Lauren, my birthday twin, what are you going to be drawing today? Uh, I'm working on this prompt where I have to make a, a, a painting. I'm doing a sketch for a painting, basically. And the painting has to be contemporary feeling. It's for a final for school. So I'm trying out some black light stuff because that's contemporary, right? What, what about you, Clara? What are you drawing? I am drawing <clears throat> some sorbet that the bread fairy made at a dinner a few weeks back as a palate cleanser. <laughs> oh, a palate cleanser. That's so classy. It is. Jordan, what about you? Um, I'm drawing a pro proboscis, proboscis monkey. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how you say, how do you say that? I don't know. <laughs> I think you got right. Proboscis. proboscis. Yeah. Hey. I'm drawing a monkey. <laughs> I don't I was asking for suggestions last night and someone said, You should draw you should draw this. I was like, okay, I don't really draw animals very much on here, so why not? Plus he's got a fun shaped nose. <laughs> Nice. So this is really playing for you right now. You can play today. Yeah, although I, I tend to play most days, but yeah, oh. today, is, today is definitely a fun day. Nice. You're not playing, Lauren? I, I'm working. I'm trying to multitask things as I can. I guess this is playing. I'm supposed to be experimenting, but I'm in that part of the semester where I just feel like I'm pooping out artwork, you know? Mm. Yep. Mm. If anyone knows what it's like to go through an MFA program for art school, it's us two. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I did one too. You're not the that's, only one that's an MFA. I met, I met, that's why I met, Clara. I met you and I as us two because we're finished. Oh. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about, okay. Got it. Oh, my gosh. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just because my master's degree was like over 15 years ago. I totally met you. <laughs> I'm being falsely accused, guys. <laughs> Maybe this isn't a fun drawing anymore. See, this is the face oh, I'm looking at. I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm just like, oh, God, this is my face right now. That's just... the tip. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the expression that, that Clara has when we tell her that our degree is not a real degree or that it's too long ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now we've now we've set the tone. This tone is one of uh, <laughs> outrage and struggle. This is this the, is the salty tone. <laughs> yeah, salty Come on, tone. We're always salty. Yeah, we're a little salty. When are we not salty? I mean, come on. 
I think I we think, put a good sweetness to it, usually. I think my favorite display of saltiness for myself, personally, was when we did the 100,000 stream. That The one I couldn't make, and I did a video for you guys, of my quote-unquote wet charcoal. I think that was <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, pretty yeah. good. <laughs> that was very salty. <laughs> I did that in one take. I was like, this is this is gonna be plenty. This is it. <laughs> we would love it, everybody, for you to hang out in your studio and work on your personal artwork with us. And then afterwards, you can post your personal artwork in the Discord and we can take a look at what everybody made and tell us in the chat what you are working on right now in your studio. And by the way, we already have a super sticker here from Note. Thank you so much. And woo, we have another super sticker from RB Dick. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. <laughs> yeah. I always love Jordans. It's so cute. I think all of them are fun. <laughs> I wish I could see more of them more often. I guess that means we need more super chats, right? Mayhaps. Yep. Mayhaps. You guys got to work for those animations. You know, <laughs> we're not going to just play them for fun. <laughs> Sometimes I've thought about donating through my YouTube account just so I can see them for myself. You're silly. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like uh, cannibalizing what art prof eating its own arm or something. So we have Ginger Cell who is working on a Wumi Gurumi turkey. How the heck do you say that? Oh, is that <laughs> one of those uh, like Shane who is doing a still life? I don't know. I've never seen one. I don't know what that is. It sounds like one of those crochet, the uh, crochet pro like uh, stuffed animals. Let me go room. So Mareka is working on the background of an oil painting master copy fragment of a 16th century still life with dead birds. Yes. <laughs> Very fancy. Well done. Ooh, I like this blue. So the question is, who here saw the new Spider-Man trailer? <laughs> I did. I totally saw it. And it, it was excellent. My childhood is about to be relived for the first time <laughs> in a while. Is that just because Dr. Octopus is in it? No, well, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, um, Electro, who I think they're doing right this time because Jamie Foxx being blue wasn't that great. Um, Although I was 19 when that movie came out, so I guess that's not really childhood. But, um, but yeah, all that. Oh, and Sandman is in it, too. It's going to be awesome. Lauren, you're not going to nerd out with us on Spider-Man? I don't, I don't know anything about Spider-Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, birthday twin. That's your superpower, not mine. But I love listening to it. I love listening to you guys nerd out. So keep going. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I know what your favorite part was, Clara. I, I can take a guess, but I'll let you say it for the people who don't know. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch saying, Hey, Scooby, do this crap. <laughs> that was a pretty good line. Oh I love that. <laughs> nice, Clara. I don't I like the goatee. The goatee is oh, sweet. He he he's a very good looking looking Doctor Strange. Like he looks just like the comic character. Like they nailed it. 
See, but Jordan, what I'm really hoping is that there is some Doctor Strange in the hospital scenes because he is a hot doctor. <laughs> like when he's wearing scrubs, I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> kill me. I highly doubt that's not a Doctor Strange movie. It's a Spider-Man movie, <laughs> but I will, I will let you keep your hope alive if you like. <laughs> I won't ruin your dreams. Maybe they need to catch up the people who didn't see Doctor Strange 1 and who need to know his whole backstory, you know? Maybe. I don't know. Is he still, is he still like, actually a doctor, though? Like, is he actually still working there? Or is he just kind of spending his time in the sanctorium just, like, chilling? Oh, yeah, you're right. He probably doesn't work there anymore. Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> Juliana Cole says, I'm so happy to be here. This is the first live stream I've made it to. Not sure what I'll be working on yet. I'm hoping to be inspired. Well, Lauren, you better inspire Juliana or they're going to be extremely disappointed in us. <laughs> uh, I think Come this on. black paper is very inspiring. You guys should try drawing on black paper sometime. It's really fun. It, it shows up. It makes everything so bright. All the colors feel so bright. They feel more color-y. So even if it's just doodling, that's, that's my inspiring content for the day. I hope that works, Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I, I love the expressions these guys make. They're always just like, like mouth wide open. Yeah, I think Jordan, you have the most inspiring thing right now. That <laughs> monkey is very inspiring. What about my sorbet? My sorbet. Your sorbet is. It's also inspiring, but it's inspiring me uh, to want to eat sorbet. Yeah, same here. I'm just hungry now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because I didn't eat breakfast, but um, now I'm just hungry. <laughs> I don't know how so make Ginger more. Salt is asking, what works on black paper? Lauren, what supply are you using today? I'm using Karen Dash Neocolor 1s. And what I love about them is I can keep layering and layering and layering them forever. And they will still go on top of each other and they have a great solid they have lots of pigmentation which i like too they're not super waxy so highly recommend well lauren you know what i've been doing recently yeah is I've been combining <clears throat> colored pencil with the crayon. It's actually a really good combination. So what I'm doing now, I'm doing colored pencil, but sometimes if I want to beef something up, I'll just do a passive crayon over it. So they're actually a really good combination. Actually, I can show you guys. I have one here. Yeah, that's such a so good idea. Let's see. Oh, this one's not on black paper, but this is mostly colored pencil with just a touch, oh. like I put a little bit of crayon here. And then, oh wait, this one's all crayon. Okay, so this is one I did, I was working on this yesterday, Brie and Dates. And this one does wow. not have color pencil. So what I discovered is you can put crayon on the color pencil, but you can't do it the other way around. Okay. You can't put color pencil on crayon, got it. You should do a show of these, Clara. They look so good, and you've done so many at this point. No, I don't feel like they're very complete. I feel like they're complete enough. Does any artist ever feel like their work is complete? Uh, yeah, yeah. Good, <laughs> good point. Question, <laughs> if it weren't for deadlines, we'd be still working on our very first drawing, <laughs> like in life. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So true. Yeah, I feel like half the time the reason I stop is because, oh, I ran out of time or, oh, it was due. You know, it's you never stop because you're satisfied. 
Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny when I get the question or when we get the question on our prop, like, how do you know when our work's done? I, my immediate response has always been when the deadline hits. That's it. Like, <laughs> I'm not even trying to be rude. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. It's like legit. That's the answer. Uh, we got Slatnir telling me Clara or Sorbet is in good taste. <laughs> oh, Slatnir does not disappoint. Coming in with the puns. So this is a comment from What's That, who says those glasses are pretty. You know what's funny? Whenever I go to my mother-in-law's house and we have something like pudding or tea or something like that, she always has this thing where she brings out like 15 individual teacups and she always says, okay, you need to choose your teacup. And it's very funny, like this whole process, because it's sort of like personality analysis like who picks which cup it's funny oh yeah don't you say that your kids have specific cups that they choose yes my younger one has a zebra cup it has three little legs on it and it has zebra stripes i love that so so much Does anyone have any special Thanksgiving plans? Seeing my cats. <laughs> That's your plan? It's my plan. My only plan. Sounds nice. I mean, does Tor miss you? Like, can you tell? Or is he just like, oh, you're here? I, he, I don't feel like he misses me. My parents say that he misses me, but I... I don't think so, but I like to pretend that he does. What about you, Clara? What are you doing? Going to the bread fairy's house. What else do you think I'm doing? I feel like every day is Thanksgiving at the bread fairy's house. I know that's awesome. Jordan, you going anywhere? Are you staying in town? Uh, I'm taking a trip to San Francisco for a couple of days. Hanging out with people. That should be fun. That's really nice. Yeah. It's going to be a nice long bus ride. So I'll get to like, <laughs> read and draw. <laughs> That's my plan. And catch up on work that I should have been doing before. I actually love a good bus ride. Lote Lot Vilma says, do you have any advice on what to do when art doesn't feel so fun anymore because it has become one's job? Jordan, any tips? Oh my gosh. Um, this is, <laughs> man, you're talking to me like, like a week ago. Um, sometimes it's just nice to take a break. I think we kind of tend to overwhelm ourselves with the responsibility of just always wanting to work on something. And sometimes it's just not there. It's just not feeling, you're just not feeling it. So I think, you know, taking a break, watch a movie, read a book, go outside, take a walk, exercise, whatever you want to do, and then try and coming back to it and not putting so much pressure on yourself is like the biggest thing I can say. Um, and, but if you're in a situation where you have to draw, um, like you know, for job stuff, then I would recommend find whatever you can that is fun about it. Like go to that place where you where you first discovered why you love drawing so much or making making art and see if you can bring that into your piece. Like if it's with color, if it's a certain shape, if it's imagining a world, whatever it is, you just have to figure out what that is for you, what that trigger is and what and just use that. You got tips, Lauren? I mean, you're doing school right now, which is kind of stressful sometimes. I'm listening to Jordan's tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what maybe, was the thing? <laughs> maybe I need to hear your tips, though. Maybe I need something. <laughs> you're being uh, <laughs> oh, man, what are my tips right now? Uh, I like 
working with another person like this is actually very helpful to have multiple people around usually I get frustrated when I'm in my studio alone but sometimes if I have another pair of eyes or someone who I'm just doing I'll, I'll go over a friend's studio and just sketch for a little bit and not think about how my deadlines are going to eat me alive That was a scary feeling when every like the art doesn't feel fun anymore. Like it's very intimidating. I, I think it's good to realize that that feeling is temporary. Like it will always the love as far as I've my experience goes, it always comes back. It's just usually exacerbated by some kind of outside thing. And when that thing resolves, be it a deadline or maybe you're feeling overworked or maybe you're just not sleeping or eating well when that gets resolved a lot of the times the art thing also gets resolved yeah you know what i think another part about this is um i noticed that and i had this habit too of like basing my worth off of my career choice as being an artist <laughs> You yeah. know, and then I, I was I was on a plane not that long ago. Oh. <laughs> the uh, Soul, the Pixar movie, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it. But basically, the movie is about your self worth not being in your career or your opportunities. It's, it's about the little things in life, like meeting the people at the market, or you know, walking to the train station, or petting a cat, or like whatever it is. And um, I don't know, like kind of realizing that and letting go a little bit and just realizing, you know what, I'm so much more valuable than just my occupation. It's, it's actually very relieving in a lot of ways. So I like that. I need to watch that movie. That sounds great. Well, I think you have to do that because if your career isn't say in the most ideal place, which it rarely is for most people, you can get really up upset with yourself, which I for many years when I was teaching in academia, because it's like you put all your eggs in one basket and that's terrible. You have to have other things in your life that give you joy or purpose. So yeah, be passionate about what you do, but don't let it define your entire life. It's a trap, guys. Don't do it. My therapist says, get a, get a non art world hobby, non art related. It's a good tip. I got to figure that out too. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I can't watch a movie without thinking about art stuff, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you <can't> <laughs> it's like that composition was beautiful. Oh my gosh. And then. I'm like, I'll need to remember that for next time, you know? I can't really go to the movies. Similarly, Jordan, I can't really go to the movies with Eloise because either she doesn't want to watch some things that makes her think about film or wants to watch something that's very academically ambitious, like an art film, and then it's work for me to watch. And then she wants to talk about it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I at that. least you like fun I things. Have to be in the right mindset to do that. Otherwise, it feels yeah. like work. Exactly, Lauren. We have a question here from who says, "Is it better to get mixing white acrylic?" Than titanium white or it's best to get both i'm actually able to get both but i want to save some money i don't know what mixing white acrylic is i use titanium white when i want to add lightness to anything unless it's a real unless unless i'm using white as i guess a color in which case then i use something like zinc white which has a little bit more warmth to it. Titanium white's like very strong or sometimes mixing with say, lightening with Naples yellow or some other very light yellow to get rid of that titanium whiteness. But mostly I really rely on the titanium white. 
I think we know that Alex Rowe uses mixing white. I think he talks about it in his acrylic tutorial. But you might also ask in Discord, and I saw that a whole bunch of people also gave some good responses. I mean, my thought is if you can try another color, I would because to try another color. But again, if you're doing okay and your paintings are not tragic, it's probably okay. <laughs> A tragic painting. Well, here's a good comment for TK. I have difficulty in choosing the subjects, what to paint or draw, like is this serious stuff? Do you have that concern, Jordan? Um, not really. I feel like anytime I put pencil to paper or in my case, black and pen to tablet, <laughs> um, I think that I'm growing as an artist. And it's really just a matter of just what I feel like at the time. Like you can turn any quote unquote mundane thing and make it into a very beautiful art piece. Like, I mean, I've seen paintings that should, you know, we've done paintings that are just a piece of bread, you know, and turn into something really amazing or a coin or a forest, you know? Yep. So you know what I'm saying? So like, it's just, yeah. I think anything you want to paint that will excite you is what you should paint and just make it as gorgeous as possible. Or not gorgeous, maybe you're trying to make a statement. See, I wonder now if this is an academia thing, because I have definitely worried about that. And Lauren, I suspect you have too, because we've talked about it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's so... Everybody's always on your breathing down your neck about what you're doing and what it means, especially in the MFA world. They tell you you can paint or draw whatever you want, but you have to be prepared to defend it, which is an interesting process. But I think that one thing that this program has taught me is that if I want to paint some birds, I can get people behind that. I can get people behind things if I'm enthusiastic enough about them, which is kind of a cool superpower. So don't don't <laughs> worry about don't worry about the subject matter, I guess. Think about what you're bringing to that subject matter, maybe. Oh my God, Lauren, that goose painting you did with the peas, that's seriously oh. one of my favorite paintings I've ever seen you do. Really? Oh my God, it's so good. You guys should go look at it. It's on Lauren's Instagram. It's this goose crazily eating peas. It, Lauren, I was so excited that I actually watched a bunch of videos on YouTube of geese eating peas. <laughs> Okay, now I have to look this up. I'm looking this up now. What do you think? Isn't it crazy? Aren't they so easy? They eat them so quickly. Okay, so why is this the thing? Like, who discovered this phenomenon of geese eating peas? I love this. This is so awesome. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, everybody you... looked it up. See? Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> It's so fun. Oh, thank you, Jordan. Thank you, birthday twin. Maybe I was inspired by you, Jordan. I, I just had it stuck in my head that I really wanted to do the ducks eating peas. I wanted to do it for a while. And I watch a ton of those videos and they just eat them so quickly. It's almost, it's almost a little, it's almost a little violent the way they demolish those peas. They just eat them all up. <laughs> so, so I need. See, I don't get it though because like the, the peas are not going anywhere. Like why why are they so frantic? They're fr well. They don't know that they're not going anywhere. Maybe they just really like the peas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad you like the painting, Clara. My classes told me that I need to experiment more with uh, the the way that I paint. So I tried to use different mediums and stuff in that. Like I used some oil painting for the first time in a while. But wait, what were those peas made out of? Were they like actually 3D? Because they look really bulbous. Yeah, they're they're real, not real peas, but real material they're glass beads they're an additive for acrylic oh. i have a whole bunch of additives that that we have gotten or that i have acquired from different people and that was one of them that i just i've had them for years and haven't touched them so it was fun trying to trying them out for the first time Thank you so much, Jill, comma, for the super sticker. The Clara Parada. Because you know what, everybody? We did very well at our fall raffle and raised quite a bit so that I don't have to mega stress every second. But we did not hit our Patreon goal. And that's what we really, really need because... That's ongoing budget that we always need. We really hit it. I think we are at 100. 6,000 is where I sleep at night. Don't you all want me to sleep at night? Yes, you need some sleep. I agree. Sleep is good. We, we could get there. It's feasible. We can get there, guys. I know. Help us get there. It's like the, the light at the end of the tunnel. It's there. Like, I can see it. It's just, uh... Is it maddening, Clara? Well, it's just hard because I'm like, I'm on the verge of not being super worried about it all the time. It's like, but it's not quite enough like still paranoid that oh yeah. no something will happen and won't be able to do this or i'll have to take this away and oh, that i don't like just the constant like feeling paranoid yeah yeah definitely understand and it's exhausting because you know what i was thinking the other day is i think if you count the number of hours that I work. I don't really think I work more hours than anybody else, but I mean, you both know I have a reputation for being a workaholic. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm just being a whiny baby talking about who I, but I actually don't. But then you know what it occurred to me? I think the reason why it feels like more work is because it's like very high stress work. So it's yeah. like, it may not take that number of hours, but like the, the mental strain of what I'm responsible for is very high. And so it just feels like a lot of work, even though the manual hours are not actually that high. Yeah. Yeah. You also wear all the hats. Your job isn't specialized. And does that be nope. a lot <laughs> one the other? You have so many things juggling in your head at one time. Well, and I feel bad because like, I don't want to disappoint anybody, you know, it's like, we've put this thing out here and I want to keep it going, but I do worry about like letting people down and that just stresses me out a lot. I mean, Whoa. Jordan, you started your YouTube channel and everybody should go subscribe, but yes, please. <laughs> I think through that you've learned to wear many hats, correct? Oh yeah, like I had no, I only knew a fraction of what you were dealing with and I still kind of only have a fraction or know a fraction of it because um, like there's just so many other things that you're doing for our prof that I haven't even started or considered for mine. Um, but yeah, just like, just the process of editing videos by itself or managing uh, time management and figuring out what I want to post on Patreon or things like that. It's always kind of stressful <laughs> and I'm like, man, yeah. and, and then the other thing is I'm just depending on myself for you. You have to depend, you, know, you kind of, you have to get us involved too. And I imagine that things kind of get a little more challenging there as well. So. 
just a little. Yeah, I don't want to speak for you. I just it, I, I, hopefully we're not stressing you out too much, but <laughs> I know things happen. Sometimes. It's like herding cats. No, you know what it is. It's like that's what it. It's like the headspace. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like my brain is divided up into so many sections. And I find that exhausting. Like my husband has a job that's fairly tedious, but he only has to do that one thing. And so it's easier for him because he doesn't have to constantly juggle 18 things all at once. And I think that's the difference. Like you've got that with school, right, Lauren? And you've got two jobs and it's a lot. Yeah, and student government. Wait, I thought you were gonna <laughs> come no, back. I... <laughs> I, I I am in this role and I can't yet, but I don't know. It's, oh, like, it, it's, it's, it's hard to establish boundaries for things. This is something that constantly comes up over and over and over again. And I think when you have a job that is or you have something that you really care about, like art prof, you don't want to, it's, it's really easy for it to take over your life or for it to um, just become your life even. And it's hard to say no to it. And so I think that's the constant struggle with you, Clara, is you care, about so much more than just art prof with the art prof community and making and not letting right. people down and making sure you do everything well that's a feeling that i understand at school and that can be a really heavy load and it's really hard to step away from that even if it's a thing that you aren't getting monetarily compensated for you know W315 says, Jordan, I watched your graphic artist video yesterday, and all the time I was like, can you make me a logo? <laughs> you know what? I was out yesterday, and I told someone I was an artist, and they're like, are you a graphic artist? And I like <laughs> took everything in me oh, no. to like, show them my video. <laughs> I was like, please don't ever call me that again. <laughs> I, it's funny because I didn't realize like how many people that would affect. And it uh, seems like everyone kind of understands that feeling. Um, yeah. Oh, real quick, in case someone Where wants to know Where does that much term apologize. come from? Where's what? A graphic artist. Where does that term graphic artist, like, like you're a graphic designer or you're a fire, like what is graphic artist? That's the thing. It's like, it doesn't really exist. Like it's just a term that I think people used to say can you do artwork on the computer but they don't really understand like so there is graphic design which is a legitimate thing and then there's artists who do work on the right. computer but if I, I actually in my video i talk about the description of it and it's like literally animation illustration painting graphic design and you know like visual effects like all this stuff combined into graphic arts which doesn't make any sense it's sort of like saying oh you're a doctor and it's like, okay, well, what kind of doctor you would be? <laughs> you know, are you a surgeon? Are you, you know, do you, you know, are you OBGYN? Are you with this? Are you that? Like, there's so many different types of doctors or lawyers or fitness coaches. And people, when they say graphic artists, they do the exact same thing. And it just pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be nice, though. I try to be nice for people who genuinely don't know. But, uh, yeah. Make that video go viral, guys, so everyone can understand and they won't have to make me upset anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Amaris is asking, can I use temper paint as an underpainting for acrylic or oil? I think it depends on what type of tempera paint and how thick it is. I mean, I haven't used like nice professional quality temper paint much but i do know that some of the temper paint i've used can crack if it gets too thick 
I don't know. Have you done that, Lauren? Put tempera under acrylic is this, oil? Is this egg tempera or just regular tempera paint? I mean, I mean, I, a lot of the temper paint that I used was for elementary school and it's sort of like poster paint almost. Yeah, I, I would say don't use that. That stuff comes right off your canvas. I use temper paint on some paintings that I did while I was at RISD, so about 10, 10 years ago now. Uh, uh, it was uh, temper paint and oil paint with the temper, under, mm, temper underneath and oil on top and the paint has flecked off. So it doesn't, doesn't oh. really hold up too well. It's also generally not light stable. It's not UV stable. Charismatics says, it feels like when people call you a drawer, they think that's the term. They're trying, but oh God, are they wrong? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> yes. I wish I would have put that in my video now. That's so true. A drawer. <laughs> it's the little things, guys. It's the little things. <laughs> So Sarah Bland says, I was a manager for a while, absolutely having a large to-do list with continually shifting priorities and setting your own priorities isn't for everyone. Each individual task isn't hard. It's the time management. Exactly. And the thing is you get bogged down in those little things because you're like, oh, I'll just do this one thing and get it done. And then it takes like an hour. Have you ever had that happen, Jordan? All the time. Um, I... I grossly underestimate the time it takes me to do certain stuff and that that actually is really frustrating because you're like oh i only need an hour and then it takes like three or four and then you're like oh man my whole day is messed up <laughs> now and uh it's rather tragic actually that was me the other day uh what happened why what were you doing i was supposed to create an invoice for a work that I had sold, which is a great thing. I was very happy. And I even have an inv invoice template and everything, but I got so wrapped up in it and making it look nice and say exactly the right information and researching it to make it super professional that it took me all day to finish what should have just taken me about a half hour to do. Ugh hate invoices. Actually, you know what I hate more than invoices is chasing people to pay me. I swear, if I never emailed people, I would never get paid. Like, it's just scandalous to me. And every time I email people, I'm like, where's the payment? They're like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I'm like, really? You have no idea? <laughs> it makes me so bad. <laughs> I'm convinced that all just hoping that we artists forgot that we did a job and just don't care about getting paid. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've definitely had a few Dine and Dash people. I, I had the opposite experience one time where um, my cousin introduced me to a friend of his who wanted something drawn for him and he paid me up front and I, I was like, oh, okay, cool, like 100%. And I tried to send the artwork and he never responded to the email. Like to this day, he has not responded. So I basically, I did the work, but he didn't take it. And I have his money. And I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> and I'll take this as a generous donation. <laughs> and I can't reach him at all. I have no idea how to get in touch with this dude outside of the email. Like, okay. <laughs> I'd rather that situation. That sounds <laughs> lucky you. Yeah, well, I don't give the final file to people who don't pay me in full. <laughs> so that's, there's that. I give it watermarks, watermarks everywhere. <laughs> Ann Parker says, I'm trying out casein. Any tips? Well, Ann, that was the one paint media that Lauren and I were like, what? When we did the painting <laughs> curriculum. So go look at James Gurney's 
YouTube channel because he has several videos on casing painting. It looks sort of similar to gouache, and he's a brilliant painter, so check out what he's doing. All right, everybody. Jordan and Lauren will be hanging out in the Art Prof Discord. They will be in the post live streams channel. And I hope you can all join them and share your personal artwork that you were doing during the hangout. And a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. As I said earlier, we are close to our $6,000 goal, but we're not quite there. We need more people to support us. And so take a look at your options. You can make a one nation. You can also become a monthly Patreon supporter. And we have so many cool awards. So check that out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.